So hello everyone, uh, presentations first. My name is Philippe Manku and I work for NEC Europe in Heidelberg, Germany. And I'm here to talk to you about massive server consolidation. More precisely, I want to uh, report on our first experiment trying to run 10,000 VMs on a single commodity server. So the first thing I'll do is try to explain why do we want to run that number of VMs in a single server and for what. And then I want to try to give you a, a story of how we got from a freshly installed system to a system that is actually able to run these amount of VMs and um, cope with it. So first of all, why? Why do we want this? So we are lately we have been working on something we call the superfluid cloud. And what's that? Basically, we want to remove the barriers currently on um, the current cloud deployments. So we want to pass from having seconds to uh, create a domain to having milliseconds to create a domain and we want to pass from running thousands uh, sorry from running dozens of hundreds of domains um, in a single server to run thousands of domains in a single server so this would allow for uh, new use cases like uh, deployment of middle boxes on the on the fly to uh, for instance um, to uh, cope with a, a new flow that arrives to our data center or to answer to a new request uh, on demand. This would also be useful to cope with flash crowd. So for instance, uh, instantiating a thousand VMs because uh, we have uh, denial of service attack, for instance. And at the same time, we want to reduce all of that and compact all of that to uh, save energy when the load is not that high. And this is uh, basically made possible by a uh, recent trend in specialized guests. So we have our own, we have ClickOS. There is a virtualized middle box based on the Click modular, modular router. And there's also OSV or Mirage, there you know, uh, all of the other ones. Um, and what these, these uh, operating systems have in special is that um, they have very small uh, memory footprints what allow for very good, uh, very fast boot times, but at the same time, they provide all the functionality we need to implement our use cases. Of course, our focus is on ClickOS, that is our uh, middle box, but uh, all the improvements we can get here are also useful for the other use cases and other uh, OSs. So we have basically two targets here. The first one is to run thousands of VMs in a single server. So uh, we're targeting 10,000 VMs for now and eventually 100,000 VMs later. And um, also we want to have extremely fast uh, domain creation times and also migrations. Uh, and ideally, in a, an ideal world, that this number uh, is constant as the number of guests increases. We started by doing a uh, baseline measurement. So we got a freshly installed system. We used Zen 4.2 and Linux 3.6.10. Uh, there's nothing really special about these versions. It's basically what we are using for our test at the time. And we got a 64 uh, core system with another 28 gigs of RAM. And the test was really simple. It was uh, boot as many uh, guests as possible till something breaks or stops working. Of course, we tested the guests so to make sure that they were actually working. We used ClickOS guests uh, with eight megabytes of RAM and one VIF, and uh, the guests were mostly idle, but they were running a NARP responder, and we did a NARP request to test that the guests actually working. So this didn't work uh, very well. It took us. Um, roughly four or five days to boot all of these, so we run the experiment. <laughs> we, we had a spare server for this, okay? Um, the thing is, uh, it's not just the domain creation time, it's because we were starting configuring our click middle box, and that implies access to Zen store and some, some other operations. That's why it, it took uh, like four days to run. Um, and the guests, while they normally boot in 30 milliseconds, um, they, the domain creation time got up to 100 seconds. Also, the guests were not all fully functional. Uh, we could see that the guests were running using the Zen Debug Console, uh, but they were not, uh, I will talk more, more about this later. And also DOM0 got extremely slow and, and basically unusable. So for you to have an idea and uh, for later comparison, this, is, uh, this graph shows how the domain creation time evolves as the number of guests in the server evolves. And you see here that uh, for the last one, it took more or less 92 seconds to create, just to create the guests. 
And um, then we can see there's two types of problems here. So the first one is uh, what I call hard limitations. That is what is preventing us from having the guests fully functional. Um, and I will show first of all these problems because we need to have the guests fully functional so that uh, then we can analyze performance when everything is working. And that comes to the second point, that is performance limitations. So what is making our system so slow and the domain creation time so high? So first of all, let's, let's, oops, okay, sorry. So first of all, let's go to the hard limitations and uh, what are the issues we have? So first one, guests, uh, we cannot access guests console for more than, uh, for guests over 300. Also, there are some guests that are created, uh, most of them actually without a VIF. Um, also, guests cannot access Zensor after a certain point in time. And um, the last one is that the backend switch is not able to handle uh, this number of ports. As you'll see here, uh, most of these uh, issues are related to configurations that I will talk about. Uh, I just want to give you all of these because I want to have a story like uh, from a freshly installed system, what do you need to do uh, to get uh, a system that is able to put this, many, this uh, number of VMs. So the first one, the um, console. Uh, that comes from the fact that Zen Console D opens three file descriptors per uh, guest. It's one for the Zen bus, as you can see there, and the other two ones to handle the PTY. Um, luckily for us, this is not a problem for Linux, and what we need to do is basically to configure these two uh, parameters, and this should uh, fix our issue for now. After that, we have uh, the number of PTYs. Uh, that is also not a problem for Linux to handle. Uh, again, we need to configure another parameter, and um, for our 100,000 VMs target, this should be enough. But uh, for a feature, um, it would be nice that Zen Console D uh, only opens the PTY when it creates the PTY when it's actually necessary, that is, when the user actually connects to the console. This would at least relieve some pressure on the main zero and uh, reduce the number of resources necessary to run it. So uh, with this, Zen Console uh, is working. So then the VIVs and the Zen Store. Well, this is a known problem, so I will not go into details uh, on this. Is the limitation of the number of VNN channels uh, in Zen versions before Zen 4.4. So uh, for these, we can simple, simply upgrade to Zen 4.4 and Linux 314 or later and the number of VN channels goes up to another 28K. But uh, if uh, uh, we want to run our 100,000 uh, guests target, this is not enough. Um, so one possible solution is that we can split each of the services into subdomains. So Zen store for a subdomain, the network backend for another subdomain, and depending on the, um, the requirements of the guests, this should be enough to fix it. Uh, if it doesn't, maybe we want to look at the ABI again, because with the new ABI, it's, it's uh, easy to increase the number even more. So after this, and uh, only before the switch, the number of IRQs on the Linux kernel is also important, because uh, the event channel driver, what it does is it maps uh, each event channel to an IRQ on the Linux kernel. So to be able to have uh, as many IRQs on the Linux kernel as the number of event channels, we need to build our kernel with these two parameters over there. Um, so finally, uh, the vSwitch port. So there's no good solution for this currently. Uh, Linux Bridge uh, is able to handle 1,000 VMs, and Open vSwitch, uh, as far as we know, is 64,000 um, ports. Uh, but this is still not enough if we want to run our target of 100,000 VMs. So currently what we're doing for our test is creating multiple bridges and assigning um, different guests to different bridges. But on a longer term fix, um, we start uh, building our, our own uh, backend switch that is able to scale with this number of ports. So summarizing, uh, what we need to do from a freshly installed system is first of all use send 4.4 and then basically build our kernel with that parameters over there and configure this, these three limitations over there as well. Uh, and this should be enough to have our at least 10,000 VMs for now running uh, on perfect conditions. And eventually later on, we need to look at the backend switch problem and we're doing that now. And that leads us to the performance limitations. So with a system that is able to create 10,000 VMs at least, 
um, we start looking uh, at the bottlenecks in the system. And um, basically, um, we noticed two things. Uh, the, domain, uh, the domain question time got too slow because basically DOM0 was overloaded. And uh, two things we noticed that OZEN SORDI and also ZEN CONSOLDI uh, were using an under percent of the uh, of one core, and also there was a lot of background processes running. I will talk about that later. So the first thing we did is, um, since Zen uh, and Zen Console D are using one core uh, for each, uh, we assigned one core just for that and let two other cores for domain zero so that domain zero is usable and we can do something with it. Then the second thing is, uh, in order to avoid uh, scheduling issues, we pinned all vCPUs of all the domains uh, to physical CPUs on our server. And we also uh, used the round robin to um, uh, split our guest domains, our DOM use, uh, around the other 60 cores. And then finally, because we wanted uh, to have really fast boot times, uh, one thing we did to avoid issues with the block devices is to put our root system in a RAMFS. Then, and after this, uh, we start looking at the tool stacks and the tools. Uh, the actual tool stack, uh, the first thing we notice is that after an under uh, 10,000 uh, VMs, uh, we had 10,000 processes running on the background because of the process that is spanned to handle domain death. And we disabled that because it's not very useful in our use case. Uh, a long term solution for this is to have just one process that is handling all of the domains. Uh, also, we disabled memory ballooning, is also not very useful in our use case. Um, and a, a very important thing actually is uh, on our operations, and this is one of the biggest reasons how, why our test uh, lasts for four or five days, is we can never use uh, domain names um, to do operations. Because using a domain name uh, means a linear search on ZenStore. And as the number of domains increases, for instance, for the last one, that means that uh, Excel will have to read 10,000 domain names from the Zen store to make to realize what is the domain ID, the correct domain ID. Um, then uh, we noticed that the VIF hotplug script was doing more than what we needed, so we removed that and used our own specialized hotplug script that is basically attaching the VIF to the bridge and putting the VIF up and. Also, um, we notice in the Excel code there is um, on the domain creation there is uh, something that we could fix. That is, it's uh, retrieving a domain list uh, every time it boots a VM, and this is basically to check for the hotplug script uh, settings, and is basically to check if there are domains running or not on DOM0. Finally, uh, we tried to upgrade our OZEN Store D version to a newer version that was available at the time from the Mirage guys. And with all of these uh, optimizations in place, so these two slides um, and the other configurations I'll talk about, we got these results that are way better than before. So basically now, we can boot 10,000 VMs and the last VM takes only roughly 2.3 seconds to boot. This represents a cumulative time of something like three hours, more or less. And for you to have an idea, this is the difference between before and after the optimizations <laughs> we did, okay? So it gets something like uh, 100 times better for the 4,000 uh, domains limit. So with optimizations, we have now a system uh, that is basically stable. We can use the main zero. Uh, although the creation times are not exactly ideal, uh, remember that we're targeting milliseconds for that, and we still have two processes that are consuming 100% of each of its uh, core. So, first things first, we start looking at these processes. Zen Console D, we did two major optimizations there. First one is to uh, go from poll to heapol, and uh, because at least theoretically heapol is able to um, handle this number of file descriptors much better, and then the other thing is on the introduced domain, when the introduced domain uh, watch is fired, instead of searching for, m for new domains from domain zero, we start searching for new domains from the last known domain ID, because the domain ID is always increased. And with these two changes, we were able to get the CPU usage down f to 10% uh, on the works case. Um, this, uh, according to some of our tests, uh, doesn't uh, improve that much the domain creation time, but it relieves a lot of uh, pressure and it at least relieves one CPU on domain zero. So then, 
uh, what is still remaining? We know that OSEN SORD is consuming 100% of the CPU, but we don't know how much that, um, that affects the domain creation time. So for that, we instrumented Excel, and uh, we got these results for a breakdown of the domain creation time. And what is clearly visible here is that ZenStore or the interactions with ZenStore are the uh, time-consuming is that the time-consuming part of creating a domain. So I would say roughly 90 something percent. Um, with that in mind, we looked at the tool stack again uh, and we tried to realize why. And one thing we noticed is that the tool stack for our use case to boot our very specialized VMs and for, uh, for our needs is really complex. We don't need to do much of the stuff that is done there. Also, there's a lot of Zen store entries that then we don't use. Um, and then there is this very important thing that is checking for duplicate names. I can tell you that after a certain threshold, like two or 3,000 VMs, this starts to taking 80 or 90% of the domain creation time, just checking that the name is not already on ZenStore, because this is again representing reading all the names from ZenStore, and this is very slow. So one thing we tried to do to work around this issue was to create our own tool stack. And it's not a full-fledged tool stack like uh, XE, it's just a very hacky thing on top of XE, and is only able to uh, create our PV or PVH domains now and only support VIVs. It also only writes to ZenStore the necessary entries that we use on our guests. And of course, it doesn't check for domain names because that was taking too long. And um, then we did some more tests, and the difference is this one. So we passed from having 2.3 seconds for the last domain to roughly 100 milliseconds for the last domain that is booted, what is again a huge improvement. Um, but the truth is, uh, reducing the number of entries in the Zen store is, first of all, uh, not very good because we're reducing functionality, and um, it's just a workaround because if we then multiply this number of guests by 10, the number of entries on ZenStore will increase again, and we'll probably will see the issue uh, coming again. You can see here a breakdown again, and uh, it's still visible that ZenStore is taking most of the time of the dom domain creation. So. The obvious next step is actually to look at ZenStore again um, and try to understand what's wrong there. And for that, what we did actually was to implement our own ZenStore. So, because we like to implement everything from scratch. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> no, that we're not going to do. <laughs> not again. <laughs> So this is actually a working process. I, I started doing this like less than two weeks ago. This is a very hacky prototype. It's written in C++ and is less than 2,000 lines of code and is currently um, compatible with the Zensor protocol. And I'm saying currently compatible. Um, I, I will explain why I'm saying currently compatible. So the results for the test, the same test with our Zensor are these ones. So it's not much better, it's a bit better, there's not uh, that much variation on the domain creation times, uh, but also the truth is that we have uh, less functionality. For, some, for instance, something that we don't have is permissions, we don't implement that. Everyone can read and write everything they want. So, um, and here we can see that even with our new ZenStore, ZenStore is still the problem uh, after a certain threshold of more or less 2,000 VMs. So, that comes to my uh, last slide, that is, uh, what are the issues here? And we think that the issue is more fundamental than just to uh, re-implement ZenStore from scratch or all of that. We actually need to make ZenStore uh, more specialized, uh, more aware of Zen, and less uh, a just generic tree uh, structure that allows us to uh, read and write configurations. Of course, we need to avoid everything that uh, that is a list of the domains or the keys on ZenStore as, uh, uh, as much as possible. Then, um, and more on the uh, implementation side, one of the things we want to do is uh, to remove the Unix sockets because when we're talking about milliseconds uh, creation of the domains, uh, it's not that Unix sockets are that slow, but for this uh, time, they affect us a bit. And also, we want to make um, the storage backend, something that we can customize for w our needs. For instance, if you want to use uh, NoSQL database, that should be possible. And for you to have an idea, just uh, from changing from a standard map to a boost and ordered map, that got the creation of 10,000 domains two minutes faster. 
and it's just a very very simple change as you can see so the idea here is that we need to actually optimize uh, ZenStore and the Zen protocol itself ZenStore protocol itself so where are we now? Um, basically, we got a usable uh, running system with 10,000 guests booted. Uh, the guests are not are mostly idle, but they are actually working. So we tested them uh, by doing an ARP request, and all of the guests uh, respond and are working. Also, we tested them from to uh, with reads and writes from Zensor. Uh, we tested all of that, and all the guests are not doing work all the time, but are actually working. And we got the domain creation times down uh, from the first 100 seconds that you saw, um, and just for 4,000 guests, to 100 milliseconds stops for 10,000 guests. Um, can we reach 100,000 VMs? Um, it looks like there's no fundamental issue on the hypervisor itself, uh, but the ZenStore protocol it's what it what needs work. We need to optimize the way that the tools interacts with ZenStore uh, to make this possible. So, as a future work, uh, we want to keep improving leaks and also now changing the ZenStore protocol, optimizing optimizing it here and there, and also of course all that depends on ZenStore, like the Zen NetVec or uh, the LiveXL. We'll keep working on our uh, multi-thousand port vSwitch as well, um, and then we'll go to have uh, guests actually doing useful work. Because we know that when we put guests under load, having 10,000 or 100,000 guests on a single server is not going to work if all the guests are doing useful work at a time. So the idea here is try to understand how many of these guests that are booted can actually be doing useful work so then uh, we can use these very fast mechanisms to eventually migrate guests from one server that is starting to be overloaded to a new server that is uh, not under so much load. Also, and this, this is also very important, uh, we want to reduce the memory usage. Uh, because, for instance, on our case, uh, we have an 128 uh, gigs um, server, and that allows us to boot with five mega guests, like 24,000 guests, that is not uh, the 100,000 we have. And one of the things we, we think we can do is to share memory. Uh, since we're booting always the same image, we may be able to share memory between the guests. But this is just a thought. We didn't actually uh, got into this. So that's it. Um, please take a look at our uh, open source code that is there. Uh, we have basically our ClickOS, of course, and our uh, XCL that is there actually under the name of Cosmos because Cosmos is our actual tool stack that is able to use either Excel or XCL as the backend, let's say, to communicate with the um, system. And that's it. Questions? Yes? So. I can show you again. Uh, we have that 64 core server. Uh, that specific processor is a four socket machine. And uh, on the RAM side, we have 128 gigs. OK. So why do you choose four cores for the build? I mean, did you okay. some measurement to figure out which one is the best? Not really. That's why I told they are blind optimizations. It's just something that we did because, OK, it makes some sense. Uh, we needed two cores. We knew that because OZEN SORD and OZEN console, uh, and Zen console D was uh, using one core for each of these services. And we let other two to run all of the other uh, service on DOM0. Maybe it works with three cores. And now that we reduce the usage of uh, Zen console D, maybe we can put, uh, put them running on two cores, for instance. Eventually, I cannot tell now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> exactly. I run Zensor and Dom Two. No. Uh, both OZEN Store D. I know we can run them on stub domains, and that's eventually necessary, as I told if you, we want to run at uh, 100,000 guests. But for now, with the um, new event channel VI, this is enough to run it on domain zero. Yeah, I'll talk about that. Yeah. So it's, I, I, I 
I love this whole idea of just killing the zestral binary protocol because it's, it's <laughs> probably the biggest source of uh, I know. optimization problems as well. But uh, the problem is just the ABI, right? We have to maintain backward support. So given all of your guests and many of guests, have you thought about uh, um, having some kind of a switch where we can have a, a BQ ABI just for many of guests? For Zensor. For Zen, sorry, you mean? Yeah, because the problem is all the backend setup. I know, yeah. Uh, eventually, it's not that uh, we need to kill everything on Zensor. For instance, uh, one of the things that proved useful is having a way to retrieve an ID associated with a name. So yeah. if we have that, it's just a new message and will not kill anything on, on the backend. So maybe we can do all of these changes we want. Uh, and as I told, I, I, this is a two weeks work. So we didn't actually thought that much uh, of the changes we need. But eventually, we don't need to actually kill everything. Uh, and we might be able to uh, have backwards compatibility out of the box. Maybe. Um, there's a, a clear reason why I choose to rewrite everything from scratch. The first, uh, or better, two reasons. The first one is try to understand what is happening and how we can improve it. And the second one is because actually uh, it was much faster to me to write it in C++ than Okamo. That, sorry, I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it was ways, ways faster. And I had like two weeks to do a prototype. So so I could present it here, so that's what I did. That's, that's the main reason. There's nothing against, probably, uh, I didn't try it, but there's probably nothing against trying to then backport this to the OSEN store. The, there's probably no, no problem on that. Great, thank you. Okay, we're, uh, we're out of time, so it's time to Yeah, that's true. Okay, thank you.